Okay, welcome back, everybody. In this segment, uh, we're going to discuss strategy automation as part of our strategy development and backtesting series. As I've been joined on all of these previous episodes, I'm joined today by uh, Tom Snyder, CMT. Tom, thanks for being here. Mike, it's my pleasure. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. These these uh, This series has been a lot of fun to do. We've done, this will be our fifth episode. We talked about, you know, the foundations of strategy trading. We talked about the elements that go into building rules, performance evaluation, optimization, and then the ultimate expression of strategy backtesting and development is automation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Right. We've done a lot of work to get to where we are. And hopefully we've found something that we're okay with, that we're happy with in terms of the laboratory. But now we're actually going to put this in the real world, or at least a simulated real world, by applying the strategy to our simulated trading account. So let's just get a couple of definitions out of the way. So strategy automation is the ability to take a back-tested set of rules and apply them to a market and the strategy will make the entry and exit trades for you automatically hands-free. It's, it's like program trading. It's like being one of those big guys that just lets the computer run and 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 go. And and the 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 reason we do this is that we we want to be a little more disciplined. We want to stick to our rules. We want to stick to our plan. And it really adds a, a new layer of discipline to your trading that that can really you know help your take take your trading to that next level. Right. It also helps with the emotions, right? It, it kind of takes the emotions out of the trading. You know, if you don't have an automated trading system and we're trading manually, you, you run the risk of veering from your plan and participating or not participating based on your emotions. And this takes that out of it. So for good or for bad, right, we still have to rely on our strategy as being a good strategy for what we're trying to do. Um, just remember that no matter how well you test a strategy, you could run into one, two, three consecutive trades that don't go your way. And that's hopefully, you know, something that doesn't happen. But we just have to, you know, be aware that not all trading strategies are 100 percent. So that's an interesting point, because one of the things that you get from strategy backtesting a trading idea or a set of rules is you get an expectation of what the risk of that strategy is, what the performance of that strategy is. So it really kind of gives you, you know, a way of knowing in advance a little bit uh, what to expect um, in drawdown and, and profitability. And to your point, that can really help keep emotions in check. So Mike, maybe let's take a look at the chart and see what we've done so far. This is the uh, micro NASDAQ December contract in this example, it's a one minute chart. I know we decided to test everything on a daily basis and look at daily data, but you can also apply a strategy to an intraday chart. And of course you would want to test it to that time frame. In this case, in the uh, for the purposes of education, we're applying our strategy three period moving average, crossing the 10 period moving average, to a one-minute chart so we can show you what those trades might look like. I mean, if we were on a daily chart, this this uh, session would have to be several weeks long <laughs> in order to see a couple of trades. So using a one-minute chart um, is just for demonstration purposes only here so we can see those crosses in real time and show you what you can expect from the automation process. Exactly. So let's take a look. So right now you can see this looks like a strategy that we've seen before that we've Put on our chart and it has notated where we have taken or would have taken trades uh, as the case may be. Now, um, this is a mix. What we're seeing now is a mix of history of, of trades that we would have taken had we had this enabled, but also we've actually taken a trade uh, already today using this automated strategy. So when I say a mix, this is what the strategy would have done. And then once we enable it, it actually is trading. So how do we enable that, Mike? So let's let's let me just back up one step here a little bit. So what we're doing here is we're watching the historical backtesting of the strategy now in real time. So there's two environments here that we we operate in 
when we're automating a strategy. One is we're looking at the strategy in, a, in the chart and it's generating orders in real time. But the chart, and this is the key part here, the chart is not generating the orders. The way that strategy automation works in NinjaTrader is that we apply that strategy to the control center and the control center monitors the rules and places the trade. So, so, so Tom, yes, let's, let's do that. Um, we already have the strategy in the control. Oh, do we have it in there? Go ahead, go to strategy. So yes, we already have it have it in there. Do you want to remove that and add it, or do you just sure. want to talk through this? Well, let's let's uh, remove it. We're about to get a nice signal, so uh, or maybe a signal. So uh, the way you would do this when you first open up strategy, you should not have any strategy up there, and you would just go to the first item, new strategy, and then. You'll see the strategies that you may have developed, but you also have some sample strategies. I use the sample moving average crossover strategy. And here uh, we would uh, take the uh, instrument that we want to apply it to, choose that instrument here. I chose the micro NASDAQ. This is by the micro E-mini because we already have a strategy on for the micro NASDAQ. And we would make sure that this uh, reflects what chart type we're looking at, a, a a minute chart. It's one minute, uh, one minute, and you know pretty much everything else works the way we want it to. Here, we would want to make sure our parameters are set to that automated uh, or that back tested strategy. But if you've saved that back tested strategy or that optimized strategy as its own uh, strategy, then those should already be filled out. Uh, we hit OK. And now I've got two strategies working. I have one that we see on the chart here, which is the NASDAQ, but I'm also watching it here in the E-mini. Now I have not enabled it. This is the key. You can add a strategy to that strategy panel, but until you enable it, it's just sitting there waiting to work. It isn't active. Uh, Tom, can we go back to that edit dialog? Uh, sure. There's a drop down there that I just want to talk about for just a second here. And um, if you if you scroll down a little bit, it says calculate. So it shows the account that you're trading in, and then it calculates. So let's click on calculate for just a second there. So the strategy that you have in the chart, um, it evaluates the rules based on a cadence that you set here. Now the strategy can either calculate just one time per bar, evaluate the rules, and then generate orders, or it can evaluate the strategy on every tick. In which case, if once the rules are true, it will immediately send the orders intra-bar as they occur or on a price change, which is very similar to each tick. If the price changes and the rules are true, then the strategy will generate those orders uh, the moment that th those rules are true. In this case, we're using on-bar close because we want to make sure that the two moving averages have crossed on the close of the bar, and then we generate orders into the next bar. Oh, that's a very good point, Mike. If you use each tick or price change, you run the risk of crossing those moving averages during the bar formation, getting long or short, but then by the end of the bar, the pricing might reverse and uncross, and now you're in a position where you didn't want to be according to your strategy. So very key when we're talking about crossing events, we want to make sure that we use bar close. So let me click, yeah, click cancel there. Click that out. And now, uh, what we're looking at again is that mixture of historical data, uh, historical trades. We really didn't trade here. This was applied to the chart, but once we enabled, which was back here, and we'll look at how you can tell, um, this is now trading according to those rules. And in a moving average crossover, if you don't have any other type of exit, it's a, it's a, you're always in the market. You're either long or short. So each one of these events creates an exit order that gets executed to close out your previous position. And then it does the same type of order to go the other direction. It's a stop and reverse study. So you'll see two different types of orders. You'll close your position and then you'll either sell short or buy. And that is because you're opening a new position. So it'll show you 
which uh, on top you'll see the, the, the one that closes out the position and then underneath the next order, which will open that, that opposite position. And so you can see here, when we see these moving averages cross, this three period crosses above the 10, we wait for that close to confirm and then we go long uh, that next bar because this bar was closed and it confirmed. We see the moving averages continue to travel up as the market moved up. We have a little bit of consolidation that allows the 10 to catch up to the three, a small pullback. And we see right here, uh, we saw a cross occur. We waited for the close and then we went short. And then we also, uh, we closed our long position. We went short and then a quick reverse. This is a whipsaw. That happens in moving average crossovers. We went the opposite way, and now we're long one. And you can see this reflected in my um, order where I got in, my, right? This is a one lot that is green, so it's long, and I'm underwater right now because we're trading right below that price. So, so, Tom, do you need to have chart trading turn on to see that little indication of long and short? Exactly. So the way I have my chart trader on, you can go up to the top of your chart. You see this egg beater on the side. You have off chart trader and chart trader hidden. I like to have that chart trader hidden uh, just as a rule when I'm manually trading, but it'll also show if you have your chart trader on with the ticket on the window. If you turn this off, that indication that you're in a position on the chart disappears. And I can turn it back on by going back to the egg beater and either choosing chart trader, but I like the hidden. It gives me more room on the chart. So as I said earlier, there's there's two things going on here, right? There is the automation that's occurring in the control center, and then there's the monitoring of the strategy in the chart, right? So if we go up to the control center, Tom, um, we can actually monitor whether or not the position that the strategy in matches the position that we are in the real world. So that that's really an important um, point here, is that for the strategy to close a position or take a new position, they need to be in sync. So the real world position has to be in sync with the strategy position. And in this case, it's our real world position is a simulated environment, but it's the same concept. So. So maybe talk a little bit about those columns in the in the control center there. Right. So the first four columns are uh, informational. What strategy, what instrument, the data series, a one-minute chart, and the parameters for the studies. That's something that we would change if we edit the strategy. Here, this is where we're, Mike's talking about what position does the strategy say that we're in? We're in a one long position for the micro NASDAQ. It's kind of, if, if, if it didn't know that we were trading this, if it wasn't automated, it still would show a one lot, uh, one long position because that's what the chart says. Now the account position is one long as well, right? We, we, we took a long position when this uh, trade executed and so they match so they're in sync now if you're not in sync you can right click and you can synchronize the strategies and um, that'll kind of correct this but sometimes you'll say the sync is false you'll see the sync is false and that's when you'd invoke that um, we just have some other informational uh, in uh, columns here average price so average price is if you had multiple units some strategies you can uh, enter one unit, let's say uh, one contract, and then add to that strategy. It's kind of layering in or pyramiding in a strategy. So the average price would take all the uh, entry prices and, and average those out. Of course, here's the the P and L, so to speak, right? Unrealized. This is the current positions P and L, and then this is the position the P and L of the positions we've taken and closed up until now. Uh, the account that I'm in, and then, of course, my con data connection, and is it enabled? So that's basically a summary of those columns. But the key here is we want the position, if you're, if you're trading this live, you're trading this automated, you want this position to match the account position. And if they are, they'll be in sync.
Look on the, the positions tab for me there, Tom. This is where you can get a quick look to see what your actual position is in the simulator or if you're trading with real dollars in a real account. This is where you can see that position. A couple of best practices here, Tom. One of the things you don't want to do when you're automating a symbol is to trade it in another strategy or to trade it discretionarily uh, through the chart trader or the Superdome. If you're if you're automating a strategy, in this case, we're automating the N, uh, the MNQ. Uh, you do not want to be trading that anywhere else. That's that's a real important best practice is because anything you do in that on this symbol, other than the strategy, is going to mess with your sync. So you're, you're going to mess up that sync, and the strategy is not going to be able to do what it's supposed to do. Right. So, Tom, and we just had a trade. Notice we went from long to short here. Exactly. So let's, let's look at that strategy tab again real quick. Let's go back to strategies. And now you can see we're one short. One short. And They're in sync. One short in our account, and we're in sync. So that's that's what a, a live strategy trading um, fill looks like. These and it's lines done completely hands free. Right. Yeah. I I I should keep my hands <laughs> above here. And Nothing let the up next, your sleeve. <laughs> let the trade happen. Um, <laughs> you know what's what's really neat about the way this is displayed is uh, there's a connecting line between the trades. So every time we take a trade, there's a dotted line, and sometimes it looks like. It's one line with two different colors, but it's just the the different trades. Sometimes they they don't go the way you want, and the trend stays the same. But uh, we color those uh, according to if they're profitable or not. Um, so this long trade was a nice profit, but this short trade kept going. So we got stopped out. We didn't get stopped out. We got chopped out. We got chopped out because of the moving averages reversed. And uh, we took a losing trade there. And now we're with this, 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 uh, what was this? This was a long trade that again, also got a little bit choppy and we took another losing trade when we got out. And so now we're short and we're hoping that that current, current trend that was not good when we were long remains now that we're short. So these, these connecting lines on the strategy, we really haven't talked about them, but they're a quick way to say, okay, where was I profitable? Where was I not profitable with my trading? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, they 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 basically um, draw a line from, from entry to exit, from entry to exit. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about another best practices, Tom. Uh, and that is when you're automating a strategy like this, and especially if you've got some experience with it, <clears throat> there could be a tendency to want to just let this run uh, grab your golf clubs and go play golf <laughs> while this is running and it's making money for you while you're playing golf. That that sounds great. But in practice, Tom, um, anything can go wrong here. Um, you could lose internet, you could lose power. Um, you know, there could be something, the strategy may have a bug in it that you didn't know about until it manifests itself in the chart. So you really need to be present here, even though this is going to free up your emotions, it's going to improve your discipline, it's going to give you time to work on other things uh, while you're monitoring your strategy, but it, this isn't something where you can just set this and forget it. Oh, completely agree. I mean, you said it the best, uh, as if the internet goes out, which is kind of what everybody relies on when we're talking about trading, um, you know, that alone should give you pause for thinking about walking away from your screen. Uh, but, but you're right. You want to make sure that the, where the execution is happening, meaning uh, when it's happening and at what price and, uh, um, you know, are your trades looking the way you envisioned, uh, you can actually apply the strategy without enabling it. So it's not turned on. And you can look at the history to say, okay, I've back tested this. And I can get a good sense that, yes, these, these executions in, in the past that would have, would have gone off here look correct. But I would, I would also just, that doesn't give me a reason to walk away. I want to make sure that they're correct as they're being executed. Because you don't know. There might be something that uh, is between the data provider and you, there might be something that uh, 
causes this not to behave the way you want it. Of course, internet outage is the number one thing that would make me concerned, but there might be other things. So you do want to monitor and say, is this automation behaving the way I want to? And it could be a matter of programming too, right? So, you know, there are all sorts of things you want to think about, um, but ultimately you want to make sure this is behaving. So, you know, there's a lot of things going on in, in a strategy. It's generate, it could generate market orders or limit orders <clears throat> and how those orders behave in real time uh, can be a little bit different than how they behave historically. Historically, you know, you, you don't have the, the, the fast market tick by tick behavior. So it's really important to, once you back test something, as Tom said, to forward test it, you don't have to forward test it with automation. You can forward test it, make sure everything is, is, is being generated like you expected. Once you have that confidence, then you can automate it in the simulator. Once you have confidence that that's working, you can automate this with your real dollar account with the smallest possible size to start. And then you build yourself up from there uh, once you once you build confidence in the strategy. Completely agree. Um, Mike, now one of the things you can do to check, right, we can visually check what's happening, but there's another tab in the control panel and uh, it's called executions. So this will show you, if you go to executions, these are the um, orders that are executed across your account. Now you have these different columns and you have the actions, buys and sells, you have the quantities, all this information. I've sorted mine on time. Here's the time column. Just to show what's the latest execution, it kind of makes sense, right? If we're questioning what's happening on the chart, oh, does that look right, that recent trade? I wanna see that at the top. So I've sorted on, on time and Basically, I can look at my chart and see, is that does what happened on the chart match what happened in my executions? And so I'm looking and I see, well, the last two executions were cells, right, in, in the micro NASDAQ. And we would kind of expect uh, two of the same trade when we're doing a stop and reverse. So looking at this, at a uh, little just a little bit ago, we got two cells, which jibes with what I did here. And I can scroll down. There's a scroll bar on the right. And I can just continue to slightly scroll down and make sure that this makes sense. Now, you may run into, if you have an account that you trade other contracts in, you may run into another contract, right? And that's okay. You could sort by instrument as well. But you just have to be aware that this control panel shows all the activity, all the executions you've done in this account, not just what's on the chart. But it's a good way to make sure that, look, I don't know if this went off. Let's make sure it did. Oh, it is in the executions tab. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, if you look at the name column there for a, for a reversing strategy like this uh, on the executions tab, the name column uh, to the right. There you go. Uh, this shows you exactly the order entry behavior that each order generated. So it closed a position, it took a short position, it took a long position. You can see that here. And, and, and that is a great column to kind of track what's happened in the account and what's happened in the strategy. So, you know, again, there's lots of, of different uh, data information here that, that can really help you. Mike, I do want to remind everybody that this is for educational purposes only. These factors are not optimized. We don't recommend them for intraday or historical or to automate trades in any way. This is just to show you what you can do. We looked uh, for you to determine what's best for you, but realize this tool is available for you uh, to, to help you be a more disciplined trader. I agree. So Tom, one last thing before we go. Um, let's go back to the strategies tab. And you know, let's say I'm done strategy trading this for the day. Yes. Uh, how, do, how do I stop it and how do I get flat? So the first thing I would do is uncheck enabled. 
notice that I still have my position, but the strategy came off of the chart telling me that it's not active. Really, the key, though, Mike, is it has to be in this panel because this is what drives that automation of routing orders to the exchange. To your point about getting flat, you can so come just over. Just one thing real quick. Yes. Notice that the position column does not have a position now. So the strategy does not have a position. That's really important to note here. But the account does have a position, and that's what we've got to get rid of. So the quickest way I like to do it is go over to positions. And if you only have one position, you can use flatten everything. That'll close everything that you have, every order. If you're, you're walking away from your ninja trader and you're done for the day, I highly recommend coming here. And if you have a position, flatten everything. If you, if you want to keep the position overnight, that's a different story. Now, if you have multiple positions and you do want to keep one of them or multiple positions but you want to close this one you can just hit close position and it'll take care of just the instrument you have highlighted and so now it closes that position and i can uh, walk away without worrying about having any orders left in the micro nasdaq The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All the symbols, trading ideas, and market commentary are for educational and demonstrational purposes only and are not recommendations or trading advice. Live sample trading occurs in a simulated environment. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All the information and content presented is provided by Ninja Trader LLC, and the opinions expressed by all third party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involves substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade futures with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.